What's going on, everybody? Hopefully, you watched Impact on Pop. Impact Wrestling was back tonight. First show of 2017. It was live. L-I-V-E live from the Impact Zone under the new ownership. Anthem Sports Entertainment. Glad there's new owners. Very happy. This is the best news that TNA has gotten in years. Probably since they got on Spike TV. Dixie Carter is gone. She's no longer the president. She is gone from TNA. She can't make any decisions anymore to hurt TNA wrestling. Very happy about that. Very, 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 very happy. Dixie Carter's gone. She can't ruin Impact Wrestling anymore. She was an awful president. Glad she's gone. Glad TNA Impact Wrestling has a new ownership. That's a great thing. Here we go my Impact on Pop review for January 5th, 2017. The first Impact Wrestling of the new year. First it kicked off with Eddie Edwards versus EC3 highlights and Eddie Edwards versus Bobby Lashley highlights from the Hardy compound. So that was a good start. And uh, it was a no contest. Eddie versus EC3 and Eddie versus Bobby was no contest. So here we go. It's start off with Josh Matthews. I don't like the guy as an announcer, but who cares what I like? The guy... He, I can take him in bits and pieces, but he's uh, pretty damn annoying. Hopefully in 2017, Josh Matthews will get better and stop being a tool. So, here we go. Kicked off with Pope and Josh Matthews at ringside talking, saying, Welcome to Impact Wrestling. We are under new ownership. Anthem are the new owners, and this is the first show, basically. Under the new ownership. And then they say. Pope says it's time to make. Impact Wrestling great again. And I agree. Hopefully it does. So then we kicked off with Eddie Edwards. The world champion. Eddie Edwards comes out. Does a promo. Pretty decent. Passionate. Very passionate promo from Eddie Edwards. The world champ. Out comes Bobby Lashley. To interrupt him. And Lashley's talking, saying, I want a rematch. I don't care what happened at the Hardy's compound. That was all crap. And then out comes EC3, the guy that should be the main top star in Impact Wrestling. But I got no problem with Eddie Edwards being world champion. But pretty soon, they should give the world title back to EC3 because that guy's a star. So then it's announced... All three of them are going back and forth on the mic. And then they say, well, Eddie says, how about we have a triple threat match tonight. I'll defend my title against both of you. So the main event is a triple threat for the world title. Then we go on to another championship match. The uh, first championship match of the night, but there would be two of them. Moose, 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 Moose defending his grand championship against... Mike Bennett, the miracle. This was pretty damn good. It went the distance. It went all three rounds. Of course, the Grand Championship matches, if you didn't know, is a round system. It's three rounds. Judges get to make the decision if somebody doesn't end the match by submission or pinfall. So, Moose against the miracle. As I said, this was a good match. Damn good. Round one went to the Miracle from the judges. They picked the Miracle for round one. Round number two went to Moose. Round number three, because it went the distance, round number three went to Moose. He retains a grand championship, still is grand champion. So good for Moose. I like Moose. Guy's a good talent. Then we have a backstage segment with the Hardys, the Broken Hardys and Hornswoggle. That was pretty funny. Matt Hardy, Broken Matt, had to get down on his knees to talk to Swaggle. Then up next, we had Rockstar Spud backstage. 
just really pissed, or he, he was pissed backstage, and he goes out to the ring, and he's even more angry. So Rockstar Spud is pissed, he's in the ring, he's calling out Hornswoggle, get your little ass out here. Basically, then we have Spud versus Swoggle. Spud versus Swoggle. And then Spud loses. I didn't agree with that decision. Rockstar Spud loses to Swoggle. Before this, he lost to Baby Hardy. To uh, King Maxwell. He lost to him. And then Spud gets on the mic. He's pissed. He is fucking pissed. He screams on the microphone. He says, I lost to a one-year-old. And now I lost to a man that looks like a one-year-old. That was damn funny. And then Spud, after he said that, he goes, I'm fed up with this company. He goes, I quit. Rockstar Spud quits. That better just be a storyline. I'm pretty sure it is because Rockstar Spud, I'm a fan of that guy. He's a great talent on the microphone and in the ring. So Spud loses a swoggle. Now, up next, we had a backstage or segment. It was a miracle backstage, I believe. This was before Eli Drake's show. Miracle is backstage, and he's going up to Moose saying, I want you, I want you one more time for the Grand Championship. Miracle challenges Moose for the pay per view tomorrow night, TNA's one night only pay per view. It's live on Friday night. Sadly, I won't be getting the pay-per-view, so I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to steal it over the internet and watch it for free. Uh, I'm, I got things to do Friday night. I'm not going to even be home. So, Miracle Challenges moves for the Grand Championship at one night only tomorrow on pay-per-view, and it will be anything goals. Now we have the Eli Drake show, Fact of Life, with Eli Drake, guy's a great talker, Eli Drake, great talker. Fact of Life, his guests are the Hardys, Jeff Hardy and Broken Matt come out, Broken Matt is talking, or cuts a promo in the ring, and it was damn good. He was, he brought up Vince McMahon, said Meek, Meek Man one led his day of new show up to the Hardy compound. That was damn funny. And then Eli Drake's hitting his button. Dummy is dummy yeah button. So dummy yeah is going off. The crowd is chanting delete, 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 delete. They're chanting that nonstop. Crowd's fired up. The impact zone was pretty good tonight because it was alive. That's why it felt better and the crowd felt more hype. Probably because they knew it was live. So the crowd's chanting delete most of the Eli Drake Fact of Life segment. Jeff gets on the mic. Jeff Hardy talks a little bit. Brother Nero, whatever you want to call him, he talks a little bit. And then at the end, Eli Drake says he wants EC3 again. This was in the beginning of the segment. He wants EC3, and that's not over. And then Eli, when the crowd's chanting delete, delete, Eli yells at them, shut up. I'm talking. That was great heel work. And Eli Drake, at the end of the segment, he's saying over and over, Eli Drake saying, yeah, yeah. And then Matt is yelling, delete, delete. And then Jeff is yelling, obsolete. So it was pretty damn funny. Great way to end the Fact of Life Eli Drake show segment. Up next we have the Helms Dynasty, Gregory Helms, shit. Not Shane Helms. I believe his name is Gregory Helms. Formerly the Hurricane. So Gregory Helms and his Helms dynasty. Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett taking on Decay with Rosemary. Decay wins. I love Decay as a group. And I love Rosemary even more. I think she plays that character fantastic. She is great at it. So Decay wins. And then on the uh, giant screen... Above the stage, a countdown clock goes three, two, one. The lights go out. They're out for a while. Lights come back on. It's like dark blue lights on the ring, and it's DCC. James Storm, Eddie Kingston, I believe, and I don't remember the other guy's name in DCC. 
So DCC is behind Abyss and Crazy Steve Rosemary's in front of them, pointing, look, behind you, they're behind you. And DCC, James Storm, they crack. Abyss and Crazy Steve, they crack and bust and break beer bottles over the back of their heads. Abyss, Crazy Steve go down, they're knocked out cold. And then Rosemary, they show up the liquor bottle to Rosemary, and she climbs under the bottom rope, and she doesn't want to be in there with them. So that was decent. Decay gets the win, and then DCC cracks them with beer bottles. That's a good build-up to their feud. Up next, we had Maria backstage, Maria Canellis, the Miracle's wife, Maria. Backstage, telling Allie, put your boots on and meet me in the ring because I got something special. I got something special for you. Meet me in the ring. So up next, we had Maria and her lady squad, Maria, Soraya. I think it's Soraya, Maria, Soraya, and um, Laura Von Ness. That's Maria's lady squad, I guess. So Maria's yelling at Allie, get your stupid ass out here. Get your ass out here right now. Maria keeps putting her down. And then Allie's in the ring, Maria's still putting her down. Saying, you're nothing. You're a stupid ass. And you better get ready to face Soraya because that's going to happen right now. I guess that means Maria is still running the knockouts division because she ordered Allie to compete. And Allie had her street clothes on. So Allie against Soraya. And Allie's in her street clothes. And Braxton Sutter, I believe he, he's Allie's uh, husband in real life. Braxton Sutter's at ringside with Allie to support her. Josh Matthews kept saying on commentary, Braxton Sutter has helped train Allie. So he was watching Allie for support at ringside. Laura Von Ness kept trying to distract Braxton Sutter, kept grabbing him around the neck, trying to get him to look at her. Allie was getting distracted, then Allie got distracted for a second time at the end. Towards the end of the match, Allie got distracted, and she was on fire. She hit a lot of moves, hit a body slam. Then Allie turned around and was telling Braxton, what are you doing, why do you have, why does she have your arms around you? And then Allie gets taken out with Soraya's finisher. So Allie loses again, and that's what happened. Up next, now the main event, the triple threat for the world title. This was pretty damn, pretty damn good of a match. It went, it went over the time of two hours. This was an extended episode of Impact Wrestling. It probably went over ten minutes, and that's good. Good, good call by Pop TV to do that to let it overrun on their network. Uh, WCW Nitros used to do that a lot. Raws are always running over time. So, good thing that they're on a network that is supporting them and letting them go overtime. So, as I said, it's a very good triple threat. I enjoyed it. Lashley's a beast. The guy hit a double German suplex on Eddie Edwards and EC3. Eddie's a champion. He was defending. Double German to EC3 and Eddie. And then Lashley rips off the top turnbuckle, rips off the second turnbuckle, so the steel is exposed. And the second turnbuckles actually had Anthem. Their uh, logo, Anthem Sports Entertainment. Their A, it was an A. Anthem's logo was on the second turnbuckles around the ring tonight. Because what that's what they want to do. They want to promote themselves. They are the new owners. And they have a right to. So the t top turnbuckle, second turnbuckle gets ripped off in one of the corners. And um, what else happened? Then EC3 and Eddie started double teaming Lashley. They were both double teaming him, kicking him, knocking him down, double suplexed him. They're double hitting double chops to Lashley. But Lashley fought back. Lashley hit a spear on Eddie Edwards when EC3 had a sleeper locked on. So EC3's back goes into the exposed 
turnbuckles. Then EC3 falls out of the ring. And then Eddie gets speared. Or no. Lashley goes to the out. Lashley throws out. Tosses out. Eddie through the bottom rope. He falls to the floor. Then Lashley goes outside. Hits a running spear on EC3. So he's out. Then Lashley takes a world title. From the announcer's table. Goes in the ring with the world title. Is going to use it on Eddie Edwards. And then out comes who makes a save. And makes his return to Impact Wrestling. None other than Davey Richards. He makes his return. Grabs the world title away from Lashley. Lashley's distracted by Davey Richards. His uh, former partner of Eddie Edwards in the Wolves. I guess they could still be partners. So then Davey returns, takes the world title, Lashley's distracted, Eddie hits his finisher, like a running knee or running kick, I forget what it's called. Eddie Edwards wins, retains a world title. Eddie Edwards embraces Davey Richards, a hug on the outside of the ring, Impact Wrestling episode, the first one in 2017, ends, goes off the air like that. Eddie Edwards still world champion. Moose still grand champion good episode of impact wrestling i'm very happy they have new ownership it's good for them it's great news for them hopefully they can uh the new ownership anthem hopefully they can promote tna way better because dixie did not promote them at all she didn't do anything to make impact wrestling become better and uh get up on a bigger, higher level and be seen by more people. She did nothing for that. So she's out. That's great. Anthem, the new owners, they got the Fight Network in Canada. TNA's on that network. Every week, they got a TV deal on Pop in the U.S. And they got a new app where UK fans, if they want to pay $4, 4 or $5, they can buy the app and watch TNA every week on an app. So maybe some UK fans will pay for the app. I don't know if I, I don't think I would pay five bucks to watch TNA weekly TV, but maybe they will. So at least they got something in the UK for the UK Impact Wrestling fans to watch. If they want to, they can download the app and pay four or five bucks. Hope you enjoyed this first Impact Wrestling review for 2017. It was the first one. There will be many more to come. Again, I enjoyed tonight's episode. Uh, new ownership to TNA is a great thing. And it makes me want to support them more and watch them more. Because Dixie's gone. When she was there, I was not excited. I was thinking about not even watching TNA in 2017 if Dixie was still in power. And now she's out of power. So, thank God. Thank God for that. Hope you enjoyed this review. Like, share, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Watch my past videos. And subscribe. If you don't already, that's the most important thing. I would appreciate that. Follow me on Twitter if you would like at WWE NXT Guy. Also at NXT WWE Guy. Bye for now, everybody.